Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Is the Muslim man ordered in the Quran to grow the beard? The answer is simple, yes. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he explained this concept. When he was explaining namasa, the plucking of the eyebrows or making room in the teeth or doing tattoos and so on, how it's forbidden. A woman asked, is this something that's been forbidden in the Quran? He said, yes. She said, I read the Quran ghilaf to ghilaf, cover to cover. I did not find this in the Quran. So he educated her. He told her, didn't you read? وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرُّسُلُ فَخُدُوهُ وَمَا أَنْحَاكُمْ عَنْ فَانْتَحُوا That whatever the Rasul gives you, whatever he orders you with, take it, do it. Obey that order. And whatever he forbids you from, stay away from it. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ And have taqwa of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهُ شَدِيدُ الْعَقَابِ Allah is strict in punishment. So he explained to her that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered in the Quran to obey, the orders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to take what he gives you from the awamir, from the religious matters, and to stay away from what he forbids you, then that means everything the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has ordered us to do has been ordered in the Qur'an. Whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has ordered us not to do has been forbidden in the Qur'an. This is the Sahabi, the great Mufassir of Qur'an that explained this. So now the question gets to be, is the beard something that's just sunnah? Yani Rasulullah sallam did it, it's good to have, but is it wajib? Is it obligatory? Well, did the Prophet sallam order it? 20 plus sahih ahadith. Not one, not two, 20 plus by different sahaba. From those ahadith, you can find at least four al-muttafaqun alayh in Bukhari and Muslim. Chains. From Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, other rawayat you will find from Aisha radiallahu anhu, all showing that this is an order of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa In the hadith, that is muttafaqun alayhi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, juzu, yani, to trim al shawarib wa arkhu, and to leave al lahya In another rawaya, a'fu, yani, to let go, let it go, let the beard grow. That doesn't mean that you take it and you just have a little bit and you shave it up every day. No. Let me give you an example. If you go to a barber and he tells you, do you want me to trim up your hair or your beard? And you say, a'fu anhu, yani leave it. It doesn't mean that trim it up just so a little bit is left. No, it means leave it, let it go. If you start trimming, you will tell him, a'fu anhu, yani I told you, don't leave it. So this is the order of the Prophet Wasallam. 20 plus sahih ahadith. In Bukhari, in Muslim, in the Muslim Imam Ahmad, in the Sunan of Buddha, in a Tirmidhi, and so on and so on, you will find these Sahih Ahadith. Not just that, the Prophet ﷺ, in the Hadith that Aisha Taradiyanha explained in, in the, from the Prophet Muhammad wasallam in Sahih Muslim, that Ashrun min al fitra, that there are 10 things that are from the fitra, the natural state that a, a human being should be in. This is a fitra. And, and from them to trim the mustache and grow the beard. Growing the beard is something that is naturally given for the man. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give it to a woman. This is the natural state. And to leave it, to let it go is from the fitrah. From the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted insan to be in Sahih Muslim. Tayyib, now the issue gets to be, how much do you leave? Yani, do you, do, leaving the beard, we know linguistically, it means just let it go. A'fu, yani just let it go. But how long do you have to let it go? So first thing, instead of taking, oh, there are six opinions and seven, no, let, let's look at the fi'l of Nabi alayhi salatu salam that makes the sharh, the explanation of the qawl of Nabi alayhi salatu salam. Yani the saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, a'fu al lahya, yani to let the, lahi, the beard grow, will be explained by the action. How much to let it go? By the action of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What we know from Sahih Ahadith is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had a big beard. He has never been reported in an authentic hadith to trim it at all. This is the asal, this is the actual, that Rasulullah sallallahu just left the beard. And that's why if you look at the rawaya, kana kathir al and he was somebody with a large beard. Al-Barra radiallahu anhu in, in the report that's in uh, the Sunan of Nisa'i, authentic narration, he says, Kathul lahya, a very ample beard. Other rawayat, those that are in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, mention Adim al-Lahya, large beard, Dakhm al-Lahya, a full beard, and so on. 
So what we know from the Prophet ﷺ is that his beard was large and full. They, we have this from the Prophet ﷺ. So what about the Sahaba radiyallahu The majority of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum, as we have find the narrations. For example, the riwayat that Al-Bayhaqi, Imam Al-Bayhaqi has on Sharahbil ibn Muslim Al-Khawlani. He says, رأيت خمسة من الصحابة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم I saw five of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم They trimmed their mustache and they just let their beards grow. They let it go. They have no length given, just let it go. So this is what we find from the description of Umar رضي الله عنه and Ali رضي الله عنه and many of the Sahaba was that they had large full beards. طيب So what is the حكم on the beard itself? Ibn Hazm in Maratab al Ijma' said, Ijma'an, consensus of this Ummah. By ittifaq of the ulema, the agreement of the ulema, it is haram to shave the beard. Haram. What's the opposite? When something is haram, what does it mean to, the, haram to do? That means to leave it is wajib. No doubt, it's obligatory. By the consensus, as Ibn Hazm has mentioned. If some later scholar wants to bring another view, that's a different issue, but once the Ijma' is is, is quantified, it's been recorded, that's it, there's a consensus. Tell you, but how long can you leave it? Can you trim it after a little length? May you leave the beard, but can, is, there, is there a length that you could trim it after? There is disagreement amongst the scholars of Islam, and I'll mention uh, a little bit about it. Ibn Hajr Asqalani in Fath al-Bari, he mentions from Imam al-Tabari, the early scholar from around 300 Hijri, that he felt that there were many of the imma and ulema of the past that said to leave the beard mutlaqan, just to leave it, let it go, don't trim it at all. And yani, I don't know if they have Fatih al-Bari at Yale and so on, some people are confused about this issue. They're saying, oh, uh, you know, before a hundred years nobody said this. No, no, yani, this is something that Ibn Hajar Asqalani has mentioned in Fatih al-Bari from Imam al-Tabari. Imam al-Tabari was around 300 Hijri, which I believe was more than a hundred years ago. So. There were ulama that felt that if you look at the hadith lahya, just leave the beard, then this means to leave it at its hal. And not just him, Imam al nabawi in his sharh, in his explanation of Sahih Muslim, what does he tell us? He tells us that al-mukhtar tarquha, yani what is preferred is to leave tarqu lahya, to leave the lahya ala haliha, upon its condition, as it grows. In al-majmu'ah, Imam al nabawi this is his preference. He says that يَتْرَكُهَا To leave it عَلَى حَالِهَا Upon its condition, the beard, just let it grow. كَيْفَ كَانَتْ يعني However it is, the hadith is sahih because of the authentic hadith. So there are ulema that said, just leave the beard. It's, it's, they, they disliked trimming it at all. But there are other imma and ulema that allowed trimming at a fist. طيب. And Hassan al-Basri has mentioned that some of the sahaba, they used to trim what is دون القبض يعني what is past a fist. And this is something that's been reported by Ibn Abidin in his Hashia from Abu Hanifa and Qadi Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani from the great Hanafi ulema that they allowed trimming what is past a fist. Imam Malik in the Muntaqa of Al-Baji, he also says that by Imam Malik that he allowed trimming what is past a fist. If you look at Al-Shafi'i himself, he said in Al-Um that it's haram to shave the beard but he allowed taking what is past the fist. Ibn Hani, in his Masail of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he also allowed to trim what is more than a fist. But what is very important to understand here is that this is because there is an exception proven from the fi'l, from the action of the Sahaba. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, they used to trim the beard past what's a fist. So, because they are the ones that reported the hadith about the beard, they understood the hadith the best. So that means to leave the beard, what is the asal, what is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is to just let it go. But there is an exception to the rule given from the action of the Sahaba radiyanhum, that if somebody takes their beard and cuts what's in access, al-fadl, yani what's left an al qabada from one fist, there is permissibility there. That's not the best. It's not ula, but there is permissibility there. But to cut less than a fist, Ibn Abidin in Hashia, he says, أَمَّا لِأَخَذَ مِنْهَا دُونِ الْقَبَضَ فَلَمْ يُبَاحُ أَحَدٌ He says, Ibn Abidin in his Hashia, he says that 
about trimming less than a fist, nobody allows this. And if you look at the evidences, if you look at the evidences, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa just told us, leave the beard. So what is the best? Just leave it. But if somebody has a situation where they do want to trim it up, maybe they have a job interview, whatever, then there is a exception to the rule given, which is that what is past a fist. But no Sahabi, not from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa not from the Sahaba, no evidence for trimming less than a fist. What is the evidence for less than a fist? This is an exception to the rule, so you have to follow the way the exception is done. You can't just make up your own rules then. Tayyib, many of the people don't take this seriously. Many of the people, they, uh, why are you talking about beards and this and this? The hadith that Ibn Kathir has mentioned in his Bidaw and Nihaya, as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah has recorded it, Ibn Sa'ad in his Tabaqat al Kubra, it has been recorded by Ibn Nu'im in his Dalal al Nabuwa, uh, a hadith that has been reported by many imma and ulama and has been graded as Hassan as Sheikh Albani in his Takhrij of Fiqh al Sira. That when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrote letters to the Majus, the, the, the fire worshippers to call them to Islam, they sent two messengers, yani two people to bring a message to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These people, they had shaved their beards and let their mustache grow big. They had done the opposite. They shaved the beards and let the mustache grow big. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saw them, he was so upset, he turned his face away from them. He didn't want to look at them. And he said, وَيْلَكَمْ يعني, Curse be upon you. What have you guys done to yourselves? Why did you do this? Because this is against the natural state. They said, Our Lord, our Rabb, our King has ordered us to shave the beards and grow the mustaches. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, فَرَبِّ أَمَرِي My Rabb has given me an order. My Rabb has ordered me to trim the mustache and grow the beard. This is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the order of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this ummah. Imagine if you don't follow this order and you see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the Day of Judgment and that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turns his face away from you turns away from you, how would you feel? No, it is upon the Muslim men to obey the order of Allah, to obey the order of the Prophet ﷺ, to trim the mustache and to grow the beard. If you can let it go, let it grow. If you need to trim it at a fist, what's past it, you can trim it, but not underneath that. No dalil for that, not under a fist. And this is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as in the Quran and the Sahih Ahadith, wa jazakum Allahu khairan.